Good morning, and the Lord be with you. Welcome to worship on this Pentecost day here at Grace of God Lutheran Church in Oakdale, Minnesota. I'm Pastor John Markshausen, and I welcome you to this online congregation this morning. There is so much weighing on our hearts and minds this day. And not just the global things that are going on, but we all, each of us, have our own worries and anxieties and problems. And this is exactly how Jesus wants us to come to him, not all cleaned up and presentable, but just as we are with all our baggage and garbage. He is the one who said to us, after all, come to me, all who are heavy burdened. So perhaps heavily burdened, we gather together today. And I invite you to, if possible, quiet your minds as we worship together this morning and receive some gifts. We'll begin with our confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia.
communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Jesus Christ, as you sent upon the disciples the promised gift of the Holy Spirit, look upon your church and open our hearts to the power of the Spirit. Kindle in us the fire of your love and strengthen our lives for service in your kingdom. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as a fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? How is it that we hear each of us in our own native language. 
Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. According to John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The best one-word piece of advice I think I've ever received, especially when feeling overwhelmed or stressed out, is breathe. Inhale some good, positive, healthy air. Exhale the toxins and the poisons that are keeping you from being free. Deep breath in. Slow exhale out. It's good physiologically and mentally and spiritually. We all need to take a breath right now. Our community needs to be able to breathe and move forward. Our world is so overrun with fear and uncertainty, righteous anger and deep divisions that we all need to just breathe. And yet we feel so heavily burdened, so under pressure, so much in bondage, so stuck 
in things that feel so out of our control that we can't breathe. We can't find that space to let go, to take in something good. We can't find that happy place, that safe place. We can't seize that moment of peace and calm. We are trying to make sense of all that's happening around us, to sort through all the tears and the rage, the anxiety and the chaos. We're trying to gain some understanding, to regain our footing and restore our sense of well-being. Yet all we can hear are the echoes of a man who was murdered on a Minneapolis street last week, whose last words were, I can't breathe. The pandemic rages on. The vulnerable are dying. The lives that don't seem to matter are being suffocated. The city I love is burning. My heart is breaking. We can't take much more. We cry out to heaven and we can't breathe. If there was ever a moment when we needed the gift of Pentecost, a release of the Spirit giving new life, it is now. But I don't know if I'm really in the mood for the Pentecost story today. At least not the one we have in the book of Acts. Don't get me wrong, it's a great story. It's very dramatic and powerful. The loud rushing wind, the flames of fire dancing in the heads of the disciples, the multilingual preaching, the bold presence of Peter and the other disciples in Jerusalem. And let's not forget that 3,000 were baptized into Christ on that one Pentecost day. But that story feels out of place to me today. I'm not feeling bold or eager. I'm struggling to translate what I know to be true and what I believe into a language that anyone can understand. I don't feel powerful. I don't want to hear noises like a violent wind. And honestly, I really don't want any more fire. But thankfully, we have two Pentecost stories in our scripture reading today. We have the traditional account from Acts that I just described, but we also have another mini Pentecost in our gospel. It's a little Pentecost preview that Jesus himself gave to the disciples. It's a quiet, intimate Pentecost. It took place once again in the context of that upper room the night before Jesus died. A lot happened in that room on that night. Some important conversations were shared. And today, in our gospel, we have this little encounter between Jesus and his friends. He breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. There we have it. A little one-sentence Pentecost story that fits perfectly into what we are looking for today. It's admittedly much less dramatic than the main attraction in our first reading, but it is what we need. An encounter with Jesus, giving us a gift. At this time when we are all being encouraged to wear a mask because our breath can be toxic, it can release viral droplets into the air and infect our neighbor, it is at this time, and it seems so strange to hear Jesus breathe on his friends. But Jesus' breath, that same breath of God that brought humanity into existence in the beginning, remains in the air between us as a healing agent, a life-giving aerosol that fills the room and fills our hearts and lives with new life. Jesus follower, follows up this release of this spirit gift with these words describing the power of this gift. He says, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. The gift he gives 
has the life-changing power of forgiveness. That power is more than just a one-on-one -on -one interaction between two people. It's not just something you do when someone has wronged you. Forgiveness is based on the promise that there is new life in ashes and rubble, that there can be a new beginning when all seems lost. It is based on the belief that the dead can be raised, the broken can be restored, the fallen can stand up again, the hopeless can sing again, and all can breathe free. The forgiveness that Jesus breathes on us at Pentecost is an entirely new way that's based on Jesus' death and resurrection. It is a way that opens up doors that had been locked and possibilities that no one dared to dream of. The breath of his spirit blows through us and among us with a new sense of justice and love and comfort and hope. And this is the kind of Pentecost we need. We need this forgiving power unleashed on the world. We need it to permeate the space between peoples and communities who seem so divided. We need it to bring new life to relationships and systems that have let us down. We need it to fill the atmosphere in a world that is hurting and broken. And for those of us who have unintentionally perpetuated injustices, we need this forgiveness power to fill our hearts. And together, we need to trust that this holy breath of Jesus' Spirit is the divine contagion that we all need to start again and be made new. Pentecost is not just the birthday of the church or the beginning of some vast, global, influential religious movement. It is the intimate encounter of the crucified and risen Christ breathing life into us. And this is not just a one-time event. It is a daily, perhaps hourly occurrence that comes when we need it most, and it is based on grace alone. It is this act of love between Jesus and his friends that binds us together and to our neighbor and to God. His living breath creates faith. It empowers love. It gives us courage and forward momentum. It heals and renews and restores. It reminds us that we are not alone, but that we are part of one another. And it does all of that right now today for us. In the next few moments, you will see two examples of what this breath can do as it brings us together in Christ. Evidence of the promise that something is in the air. So breathe.
was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, died, and was buried. He defended and fed out. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. For our prayers today, there's a refrain that um, actually was written uh, by the musician at Guardian Angels just down the road, and it was written yesterday for their worship and ministry, and they were kind enough to share it with us here at Grace of God. We all sing this together. I know that uh, music is kind of hard to uh, read up there, um, but we'll sing it before the petitions and then once again after the petitions. of the Holy Spirit in our hearts and lives and for the unleashing of the power of forgiveness in our world. Come Holy Spirit, fill our hearts and kindle in us the fire of your love. For those grieving the death of George Floyd, for those who suffer under the burdens of racism and discrimination of any kind, comfort them, lift them up and restore their worth and dignity. Come Holy Spirit, fill our hearts and kindle in us the fire of your love. For all those who feel like their voices are not heard, and for those who advocate for others and work for peace and justice, give them wisdom and determination. Come, Holy Spirit, fill our hearts, and kindle in us the fire of your love. For the police and first responders, for firefighters and for the National Guard, especially Derek and James and others, who are called to serve and protect our community. For our state and community leaders, give them patience and restraint, courage and compassion. Come Holy Spirit, fill our hearts and kindle in us the fire of your love. For our broken world, for our cities and communities, heal, renew, restore and unite us together in our common life so that we may live in peace and harmony. Come, Holy Spirit, fill our hearts and kindle in us the fire of your love. For our congregation and for the ministry that we share, for our leaders and for all who pray and worship together here, that we might be strengthened in bonds of love and fellowship. Come, Holy Spirit, fill our hearts and kindle in us the fire of your love. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As you go on your way, may Christ go with you. May he go before you to show you the way. May he go behind you to encourage you beside you to befriend you. 
above you to watch over you, and within you to give you peace. for joining us this morning in worship. Just a couple of announcements to make. First of all, um, I want to let you know that our Board of Elders and our leaders are preparing a plan for um, our response to the pandemic and how and when uh, and under what conditions we will open our church building again for worship. And that should be available uh, this week, uh, both on our website and we'll also e email it out uh, so that you can um, understand the thinking that's going into those decisions. Also, I wanted to let you know that both of the videos will be available on our Facebook site and uh, hopefully also on our website as well. The choral piece, the hymn, um, both Chris and Pam Fowler participated in those recordings. Pam is a little easier to see playing the flute. You have to look a little harder for Chris, but he's in there too. And so their talents were part of that uh, wonderful project. And so I hope um, you will watch it again. And it's such an awesome hymn uh, for today. And so we're so thankful for that gift. I also want to thank all of you who participated in the Apostles' Creed Project for taking the time to make those videos and, and send them in. Have a great day. Be safe, be well, and be loved. <laughs>